Hare 
yet seen this very closely. This is a depiction of Srila Prabhupada's room in the Radha Damodha Mandir in Brindavan Dam. You see, mm, there are some items in the picture of Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur. And if you look uh, here, you can look later, there's a monkey grill. Uh, and just before that, the Bhajan Kutiya of Srila Rupa Goswami, uh, the uh, was uh, still holding, but old age has uh, painted them as a rustic, rustic color. And uh, from here, uh, the speakers want to address us. The idea of the Eastern Retreat uh, was that we would like to nourish the devotees uh, with uh, deep devotional subjects that can empower their hearts so that when they go out uh, they can live Krishna consciousness with more conviction and share Krishna consciousness with more conviction. Then I first talked with Hari Parshat on the phone, Hari Parshat Prabhu on the phone. Mm, I wanted to invite him and I think I uh, wrote you that this is the idea. Please let us present something that will nourish the devotees on a, on a deeper level so that, yes, they can experience Krishna consciousness is more alive and more, you know, the devotional aspect, the bhakti aspect of it, more and uh, more, you know, palpable. Palpable means you can feel it. And then Hari Parshat came back with a beautiful nectar container full of shikarini. Uh, it is a mixture of, uh, please help me, yogurt, honey, and and uh, camphor. camphor and it has a very intoxicated or, or nourishing uh, taste uh, that was last year and I think we were all extremely impressed and grateful as he was serving morning after morning <laughs> his shikarini preparation in the form of these beautiful verses from a verse compilation of Srila Rupa Goswami Patiavali. Uh, so when today and Keshava Maharaj was also there, he talked on um, um, uh, moods of separations, very various devotional uh, uh, feelings from Kurukshetra to um, Brindavan, what we all need to learn and I was very, very enthused. Uh, it was a wonderful experience for myself. And when I heard now the announcement of God's unfulfilled desires, oh, I thought, I will bring my pen and my notebook and <laughs> I will uh, try to catch some jewels um, for my own reflection and perhaps sharing wherever appropriate with others see things. Also when I heard about Keshava Maharaj's uh, seminar, the triggers of transformation, he will take us through the Bhagavatam and see what uh, happened in the various individual devotees so that they could really come to the next level. I was also very inspired. I must say, <laughs> And you have two such wonderful speakers. Uh, what is the need of a third speaker? <laughs> was, or, or where could he be useful? Uh, so I came up with uh, tomorrow. I will try to speak about the seven oceans of Krishna's glories and how we can immerse ourselves in one and then highlight uh, my talk on, on, on mercy. There are actually a few definitions in Shastras, 
about Krishna's mercy and each one of his mercy has a certain taste uh, and uh, in order to be grasped by us requires a certain thing. So I will speak about these seven oceans of Krishna's glories just very briefly. I want to talk about the whole thing in the Swiss uh, summer camp. I will uh, here only focus on one ocean um, to uh, immerse ourselves in his Karunatva. You will see what that is. Mm. Uh, Krishna says in the Gita we should always think of him and uh, how can we do this? What, what specifically should we think of him? Uh, I will talk about this uh, a little in detail and then in the evening I will uh, take up a suggestion of our Gorahari. He said, Holy is there <laughs> now in Braj mm -hmm. and if I could talk about the holy pastimes of <laughs> Krishna. And I did have some very nice uh, book from one Gadada Bhatta. Uh, where I took some things in, out. I think I presented it uh, in the past, but I have embellished it a little with uh, the work which my esteemed god brother Inder Dhyumna Maharaj did on this. So there will be a very, very uh, lively kata, I do hope. So it depends on the Lord, on this joyful. Uh, pastime of Lord Krishna, the holy pastime, mm, where love shows its true colors. Mm, it uh, will be hopefully very engaging. It will be at times uh, uh, funny, at times dramatic, at times very, we will get from some shloka some idea about the beautiful feelings of love between Radha and Krishna and like this we will hope to, to yes to have this immerse ourselves there uh, we will hope we will immerse ourselves it means we will form a, 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 a garland I like this verse of yours very much, Hari Pasha. There are the words of, uh, there's the speaker, he's a thread, but then there are the flower-like devotees, and then there's the needle, which brings it all together of the words of the powerful <laughs> Acharyas. <laughs> hori, hori, hori! <laughs> <laughs> Starting already. <laughs> the, the idea is these are clouds, and here is a breakthrough where the son of Krishna consciousness comes. That belongs to me. <laughs> <laughs> you, 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 you wish? <laughs> <laughs> so, yes, so this will be. Will be there. I would. Uh, uh, it was very interesting when Hari Parshat Prabhu talked about the Vindavan Krishna as being so different than uh, the majestic uh, concepts of God, which sometimes do create a distance. We feel he's unattainable for me because he's just so far away, so powerful and so on. And in these katas which I want to give, I want to uh, address the close God. The Bhakti, Bhakta Mala is a work which describes the life of a devotee. So there was one Govinda Swami who used to sing uh, for the deity Na Naji, the deity of the Lord who was 
worshipped on the top of the Govardhan uh, hill. He used to come every evening and sing with him, with, for him beautiful ragas. Now, during the day, the Lord would leave his temple on top of the Govardhan and he would go and do his cow herding pastimes. And one day he said to Govinda, you, you, you sing so nice to Govinda Swami, but I want to uh, play tip cat with you. <laughs> That's a game which, uh, according to historians, is 2,000 years old. Uh, 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 middle-sized stick is taken and uh, it is hit on a small stick which is a little bit like this and then as the small stick goes up the player has to quickly use his bat it's almost like a small cricket bat but it's only a stick and then uh, uh, how do you say, flick it or hit it, yes, so that it flies very far. So so this is what you still see the young boys in Braj do. It's called tip cat. They, they hit on a small stick and it flies and then they hit it and it flies very far. Have you seen uh, them doing this? Yes. You have seen. So Naji said to Govinda Swami, I want to play that with you. <laughs> uh, so he was a singer, he was a scholar of ragas, he was not expert in tipcat. <laughs> but Naji wanted to, to play, so they played and uh, strangely there is some competition. I, I have not understood how it worked 100%. I also don't intend to play it because <laughs> I, I don't think I would even hit the first time <laughs> properly. So. Um, but uh, anyways, mm. uh, uh, Naji did not uh, uh, surrender, he did not admit defeat. And in the he heat of the playful argumentation, Govinda Swami went to the uh, 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 temple and he uh, threw the small stick before the Lord and said, you can't, you can't lose. <laughs> and this is not fun to play with you. <laughs> and, and he went out in a huff. Mm. Uh, the priest saw that, that uh, Govinda Swami throws a children's toy before the deity and says, you can't lose. It's not fun to play with you. He had a very strange opinion of uh, Govinda Swami. Perhaps you have something came into your mouth, uh, maybe some intoxicant and uh, you lost your mind. But uh, the next morning, Naji told to the priest, uh, I actually lost and I didn't want to accept my defeat. So <laughs> you go to Govinda Swami, you tell him he should come here again and I will t uh, play with him again and that uh, time I will win but I have to uh, accept my de defeat <laughs> and we hear these things we think what the Lord Almighty playing ch uh, a children's game and he is uh, struggling with his devotee yes in the kingdom of love Mm. These are just waves in a big ocean of rasa, of, of friendly uh, taste uh, uh, and so on. And yes, this is what attracts us so with Vrindavan Krishna. He, he uh, becomes so close to us. He performs such endearing pastimes. <coughs> and the, his holy pastime, where he is defeated by the beautiful gopis, is just absolutely amazing. Mm. I want to say something um, for closing. Mm. Um. 
see we have given in the past uh, retreats at uh, Govardhan. Mm. Some of you have perhaps seen some of these retreats. I know that Hari Pasha, I saw you there, I think the first time you were maybe one time there with, with us and yes. uh, that time you were not so famous <laughs> <laughs> but still very sympathetic I was we were introduced briefly but very briefly only uh, so beautiful mm, uh, retreats and uh, I always uh, say to the people you know, come to this retreat something I want to share with you as well mm. Mm, see in the, um, you have now made the effort to come here and uh, yes there will be an educational aspect there will be a mm, uh, relaxing uh, aspect of being here uh, but mm, perhaps the that what we crave most for and what is perhaps most needed in our lives is that transformation in the heart or purification of the heart that makes it so much easier to practice Krishna consciousness that gives us relief uh, from the influence of the material uh, from the, of the gunas, of, you know, the various influences. Now, in, in these modern times, uh, we are almost always on the go. Even a person like me, who has, let us say, not all these obligations, I don't have to work at a gas station or anywhere, Mm. I can just be in, 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 in sharing Krishna consciousness. But I find more and more, it's the quality of the time, uh, that I did not uh, foresee when I joined Krishna consciousness, that there's so much to do, there's so much mm, uh, activity going on, and we are always really... Uh, f uh, fulfilling our responsibilities and uh, we are often quite busy and so busy that we might overlook those met things that matter most we move very rapidly in the direction which our busy lives dictate to us but um, Often we have that f empty feeling in the heart and we ask ourselves the questions, do, do I move in the right direction here? Or is this really uh, mm, uh, uh, satisfying my heart? Am I coming closer to Krishna? Am I losing my attraction to material and things and so on? Uh, uh, we are often missing the things that matter most devotion, love, uh, attraction, ruchi uh, and uh, so on and mm, you must know these spiritual <coughs> things are invisible to these eyes mm, the things that matter most you can't see the breath for instance you can't see uh, the in and outgoing air, the soul, you can't see the soul with uh, the unaided eye, mm. Krishna, you can't see, yet these things, breath, the soul, Krishna, mm, are as important as the oxygen in the air, yes we can't see the oxygen, mm. Uh, but without it we would suffocate 
Perhaps some of you are already suffocating. <laughs> Do we have the window open? Uh, yes, we would suffocate and we would not be able to continue our life for even uh, uh, some time. So, so going on retreats, my dear devotees, uh, is really meant so that you can come in contact with the big, important invisibles of your life. Uh, Krishna, the soul, your own, let me say, ruchi, taste, and, uh, and uh, purity, and so on. All the things which are, um, how do you say, you can't touch them, uh, and so on. Um, mm. And therefore, there are a few things which will help you on a retreat. Um, mm. First of all, I would say the willingness and the openness to take on new information and also new action. I would recommend many of you, maybe not on the first day, but in the other days, to why not do something wild and get up for Mangal Artik? <laughs> 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 you are laughing, uh, but uh, I am serious about this. <laughs> also, after Mangal Artik, there will be you know, our esteemed speakers will chant with us, each day one other, and will tune us in for our japa. No, be, be willingness, uh, be, be willing and open to do something you may not do uh, all the time. I know that most of you are not living in an ashram and you uh, go later to bed and you rise later and then you have to rush out to do your work or your education and so on. So here Perhaps tomorrow you take a little rest because you just came from far, but um, if, you, if, you, if you can come, it is better. Mm, willingness to take new information and new action into your life. Mm, then I would like to say something, um, minimize distraction. I plan to make in the future a retreat in the desert and there I will ask my participants for something I will not ask you. I will ask them to give me their mobile telephones and lock them in a, in a safe for the time of the uh, retreat. Uh, Hare Krishna, you want to close the altar? Yes, yes, please, please. Jay, yes, you can do. Jai Jai Radha Madan Mohan Radha Madan Mohan Radha Madan Mohan Siddhate Jai Radha Madan Mohan Radha Madan Mohan Radha Madan Mohan Siddhate Jai Jai Radha Madan Mohan Ki Jai so although you will not be asked here to surrender mm, your, your second ha heart, <laughs> your mobile telephone, <laughs> uh, uh, please minimize distraction so that you have more capacities in your mind and in your brain to really dive into the new information and also the new actions. No, if you, you, we need to create some space in our mind, in our mm, life. Try to minimize mm, and so on. The third thing I would love to recommend to you is dedicate yourself uh, to attending uh, the programs and also the processes of hearing and chanting and, uh, and um, uh, finally, uh, um, uh, I would say outside the retreat, uh, I mean the sessions, uh, we will give ample time for associating. Try to get to know these devotees, but then don't speak about mobile telephones and uh, new cars, but try to speak 
about things. Well, tell me your journey. How did you come to Krishna consciousness? What was a challenge in your Krishna conscious life? How did you overcome it? Try to keep the energy high. No? So here are four recommendations. Willingness and openness to take in new information and commit to new actions. Minimize distractions. Uh, dedicating your life uh, while you're here to attend the programs. Uh, and then outside, keep the energy high. Also, uh, my dear devotees, serving devotees. Poos, very good, very, very good. Try to, to maybe be there, serve them, Pasham. What would you like, Prabhu? I have this one sweet, I have reserved it. I think it's for you. <laughs> um, you know, and so on and so forth. No? Uh, finally, I want to end with a little exercise with you. Mm. There's a verse in the Bhagavatam. Yata sankalpa yet buddhya yadava matpara puman. It means whatever sankalpa uh, determined intention you have in your mind that will be fulfilled by me uh, that is uh, uh, what Vishwana Chakravati Thakur talks tells in his uh, tika in his purport a sankalpa city that is a perfection in your life which you can uh, attain by doing a certain sankalpa that I'm going to do this for you Krishna hmm. I do remember we, we do this when we do Brajmanda Parikram we go to Mathura we take a bath in the Yamuna at Vishram Ghat and while we take our bath, we say, My dear Lord, I wish with your mercy to complete a com uh, complete circumambulation of Brachmandal. And then somehow it, it carries you, it, 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 uh, the Sankalpa. But not by your own strength you are carried, Krishna carries you, I should say, like this. So, mm, uh, uh, also, um, I think we should make a little sankalpa now and here. The idea is mm, we think about our ideal Eastern retreat. What what would it be like? What it what would it bring to you this Eastern retreat? No? Mm, then you think about some practical and feasible steps. Yes, I'm making absolutely sure I'm there for the program of Hari Prashat Prabhu uh, on Keshava Maharaj that is what I do uh, absolutely sure I will make at least one Mangal Arti and so on and then the last item of making a Spurta retreat is uh, Spurta Sankalpa you go to Krishna and pray this is what I wish to do my Lord but on my own, I'm uh, small and powerful, uh, powerless. If you wish, you please empower me. Is this, uh, should, are you willing to try this? Yes. Good. So we will make a little area on A. Mm I request you to sit straight, take a deep inhale and a deep exhale, breathe like this for two times more. We all have come from far, some of us with airplanes 
trades, cars, and some who live here by bicycle. <laughs> They've come and there's a wonderful program uh, of Krishna Kata, Kirtans. Yes, we forgot there will be each evening beautiful Kirtans by our Syamalanda Prabhu. Mm. Many of you have been in temples and uh, you know what is ahead of you. Please take a moment now to think how you would like this retreat to be. Your own participation. Maybe go through a typical day in your mind's eye. When will you rise? What would be ideal for you? Would you like to come to the Dedi Darshan, perhaps, or the Guru Puja of Srila Prabhupada? There will be a morning lecture, then starting, I believe, at 11 o'clock, the beautiful lecture of Hari Parshat Prabhu. And in this way, Keshava Maharaj will be there. And, you know, everything. How, how would you like to have be of your day outside of the sessions when you are there perhaps devotees you would like to meet and would you like to talk with them something like this no Just, uh, <coughs> and uh, now you may just in your mind's eye. Turn to the Lord and ask Him, You are Radha Madan Mohan. Please bless me that I can have a nice participation in the retreat. Yeah. 
We have reached our uh, end of this presentation, but please stay for one more minute because Hari will give you an orientation of the program, and then we will uh, we will say what we will do. Thank you very much. Yes. Thank you. Hey. Hey.